All right, so I've got my photo open in Photoshop, and the first step is to cut out our objects. So normally, if you want an exact cutout, you'd use the pen tool, but for this effect, a kind of not so perfect magazine cutout look is what we're going for. So we're going to use the magnetic lasso tool. Now the image I'm using is a perfect example of a good image to use because it's got really clean lines and a slightly blurry background. So Photoshop is going to have no problem automatically detecting the edges here. On the magnetic lasso tool, you can set a few things to help Photoshop, like the contrast that you want to use, the width of edge that you want to use, and the frequency that you want it to set points. But I'm going to leave mine at these general settings here. And if I just click a point, I can just drag my mouse across the lines that I want, and Photoshop will do a pretty good job at detecting those points. If it's having a hard time, you can click and manually set a point and help it out, but uh, you could work around your object pretty quickly using this method. And don't worry if it's not perfect, because that's some of the charm of this effect. So I'm going to go ahead and go around my object here, and I'll meet you guys at the end. So once you reach the end, you should see a little circle appear when you hover over your first point to let you know that you're closing the path. So go ahead and click it, and Photoshop will make a selection for you. Now, as you can see, there's some spaces that kind of messed up a little too far on. So the button you want to use is the Refine Edge tool right here. This will allow you to adjust to smooth the edge, adjust the center of it and a few other things like feathering but if you actually go over to the the selection here and brush over some parts Photoshop will fix those a little bit more so I'll go ahead and select OK and now Photoshop has selected that refined edge and we'll, what we'll do is we'll go to layer layer mask and we'll click reveal selection so as you can see, that just creates a layer mask, which masks out the entire background. At this point, you could transfer your layer onto a new canvas of whatever size you want. But since my photo is conveniently poster sized already, I'll just leave it at this. But I will grab my move tool here and reposition the people where I want them. So I'll position them right there. And then what we're going to do is create a new fill layer. So go ahead and go to Layer, New Fill Layer, Solid Color. Here you want to pick your background color. Pick a fun color that you want to use and you want to be the theme of your image. So I'll use like a, a dark navy purplish color. We can always go back afterwards to make it blend more with the final image. But I'm going to drag that layer underneath everything so it serves as the new background. And then I'm going to create a new gradient map. So go to Layer, New Adjustment Layer, Gradient Map. So once we create that gradient map layer, there's a few things you can do. Photoshop has all of its presets, which you can use any one of those. Or if you double click on this gradient, you can actually adjust the color swatches and pick one of your own. So I think I'm going to pick a custom one and I'll make it almost like a reddish pink. And I'll actually leave that purple as the secondary color. If you want to sway the influence of one color, you could move this little position diamond here to make it more shadowy or more coral. So once you have it how you like, go ahead and select OK. And you can see we have our gradient map layer here. But I don't want the gradient map to affect the color fill layer that we just did. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new clipping mask. So I'm going to go to Layer. Create Clipping Mask. And you can see this little arrow here, and all that tells Photoshop is, hey, make sure you only apply this gradient map on this layer. So we can still have our navy blue here, but still have our cool effect there. So as you can see, it really creates a fun, eye-catching pop of color. And if you were to add some text on top of this and other details, uh, they would really pop out and make a cool poster. And a bright white usually will stand out nice since there's no white in this image at all. But from here, you could go on to add a border or add any other lines or shapes or text. But as you can see, any white details stick out nicely. But there's the start of a great poster. 
and hopefully you learned some cool techniques from this. I really like the way it came out. So if you enjoyed this tutorial, I'd really appreciate a thumbs up and definitely subscribe if you want to stay tuned for future tutorials. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. I do check out all of them. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.